I'd like to chat with you about tribal rugs and a way that you can enjoy them that you might not have known about. This is a late 19th century Kashkai gabe, and this was probably woven by two to three women sitting side by side. And what I'm wanting to point out to you is the fact that because they didn't have a cartoon for this design, you can actually follow the thought process and almost a conversation between the two if you know what to look for. Now, in the beginning, they started with best intentions for symmetry. So you had that little blue line under those three flower heads, and then a similar blue line, but not exactly the same under these three. And they I counted the number of uh, rows of knots and they were bas basically in sync. But then as you go up, and if you look at the motifs on the far side, you'll see that little by little, there is some variation. For instance, the woman on the right sort of took over a little bit and she started her red flower head a couple of rows before she did. Now you'd have to have a straight edge uh, and sometimes it's much more pronounced. But if we go up here, we see where they had a beautiful teal color and the woman on the left used her teal a bit more than the woman on the right before she launched into the indigo. Some of this might be the function of the fact that maybe she didn't have as much in her stack. But then the woman on the right did this lovely little device in the middle of an empty blue, whereas she didn't. And then they both obviously got their supplies of wool at the same time, so they both got a little bit of this nice celadon shade, and they used it on either side, more or less symmetrically. Then we get up here, and you see this woman started a flower but she realized she was gonna run into that sawtooth border, so she aborted. Whereas the woman over here had her things pretty much thought out. Then we come up and we get to this great sort of chevron motif that at first glance is uniform, but actually the woman on the right started her idea slightly before the woman on the left. So it's really like a conversation Here's this flower head that perfectly lines up with that ivory squared off section of the sawtooth, whereas she waited a few rows before she would start hers. And you get a sense of who the alpha weaver was, and it was almost like a conversation going back and forth. And I just think this is one of the most charming things. Now also, you see a lot of this in the border. So up here, she had these cartouches, and in, invariably when they get to the end of the rug and have to start weaving horizontally, they don't have what we call reconciled corners. And so she's filled the empty space with these two nice little harlequin or diamond motifs, whereas she has chosen to put in one big motif and have it cut off by the cartouche. And this is really where you start to form a relationship with a rug and realize what the charm of the rug is. And to my knowledge, this hasn't been discussed very much in literature, and I'm pretty excited because it's given me a new way to look at rugs. Now, the first thing and the most important thing is that you have to know what end the rays started at. So if you stroke the rug, it's smooth one way and it's rough the other way. So if you think in terms of a cat, the cat's tail is where they started. And the reason that the wool flows in a certain direction is because they're pounding down the knots. And as they pound the knots down, they form kind of a memory where they're leaning over. And the coarser a rug is, and this doesn't have a very high knot density, as you can see, lots of weft threads, the more impressionable the pile is to, to leaning down. So that's critical because if you want to follow the thought process, you have to know where they started. And very often, one woman would start out being the alpha weaver, and then 
it would start to be a conversation back and forth, almost a competition. I liken it to improvisation in music where there's a call and response. So again, the corner where they started, she dealt with her empty space with six of these little flower heads, and she started with far fewer. I have a theory that uh, you can tell whether they were weaving left to right or right to left as a result of this because obviously if you were weaving left to right you would get it more or less right in terms of that first cartouche but because you didn't have a scale or a graph you would get over here and you'd have that empty space that had to be filled in some way. So I hope this gives you a new way to look at rugs and enjoy them and you can go to your own nomadic or village rugs that you're reasonably certain have not been woven with a cartoon or diagram on graph paper and start to pick up on the conversation. Generally, the majority of the improvisation will be happening along the side because so many rugs have a set design in the center and the area that has space will always be along the side and that's where you see the majority of folk art and little random devices that they like to use. Hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe so that I can get up to a thousand subscriptions and I can start streaming live. Thank you.